I am the ultimate overlord, Metal Sonic. I am the real Sonic. Howdy everybody, my name is Chaos Metal Sonic, and yes, I decided to go on with this voice, voice, okay, had to make sure music was going, <laughs> anyways though, today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to warlock, yes, we are going to be talking about how to play the warlock class, now, there's a few things that I want to say before we get into it, one, I am not the best war warlock in World of Warcraft. Not at all. This is just the class that I am currently best at. I will be doing other class how-to classes. Or in other, in other words, just like class guides. I'll be doing new, a more how-tos. But yeah, this is basically a simple guide to the warlock. Anyways, though, yeah, let's get straight into it. Alrighty, so, <clears throat> before we can actually begin with the at whole, alright, so, <laughs> I just double-crossed myself. Okay, we are going to start off with very, we're going to start off with the class itself, how it works, basic abilities that you're constantly going to most likely have, you know, like, like basic stuff like that. So, of course, starting off, you have your base abilities over here in your spellbook for the Warlock. Base abilities that you're going to always have, for example, you're always going to have the ability Shadow Bolt. Shadow Bolt is your baseline ability. It doesn't matter what specialization you are on, unless you're a Destruction Warlock. Well, we'll get into that in a moment. Either way, Shadow Bolt, it's your main ability. It's your main Soul Shard Generator if you are a Demonology. It's your main Filler if you are a if you are an Agony Warlock, and it's actually replaced by uh, Immolition. Hold on. Uh, it is replaced by Incinerate if you are a Destruction Warlock. That is the wrong area I need to be in. <clears throat> so, anyways, other abilities that you're most likely going to get, of course, no matter what specialization you are, you're going to have Ritual of Doom. I've honestly never done it before, so yeah. Then you have Ritual of Summoning, that's another one that's really useful as the Warlock, especially if you're in a party or wanting to do Mythic Raids. You also have your Stone abilities, like Create Health Stone and Soul Stone. Create Health Stone allows you to create a Health Stone, which, which when used, grants you or the ally you have it given to, to heal for a fourth of their max health. It can be increased to 35% max health. And it can be enhanced to grant you Leech as well, which is honestly very good. <clears throat> Soul Stone, on the other hand, allows you to apply a buff to yourself or an ally, which lasts for 15 minutes, I believe? 15 to 10 minutes. And when utilized, it allow And it basically, uh, if you die, it allows you to resurrect yourself, as it says. It's honestly a really good ability. It is. So... Um, other abilities that you're automatically going to have, Health Funnel allows you to heal your minion. Uh, Corruption, that's one you're always going to get, but probably one you're rarely going to use because it has a cast time, and honestly, it's a waste to use it. It, it In my personal opinion, it's a waste of DPS to use it because it just it takes up time that you could be instead spending using Shadow Bolt to generate Soul Shards, which allows you to use Hand of Gul'dan, and or if you're a Destruction Warlock, it spends time that you could be using Incinerate, again, to generate Soul Shard Fragments. We'll get into that. It, it's a waste of an ability. The only time it's not a waste of an ability is when you're in Agony Warlock, or not Agony, Affliction Warlock. Why did I say Agony? <laughs> when you are an Affliction Warlock, because at that point, you it's like a baseline ability that you have to use 24-7. Uh, you also have Drain Life. That's another constant one among all three of them, though it can be enhanced if you're an Affliction Lock. Uh, drain Life is your main sustain, aside from, health, aside from your Health Stone. Oh, also, something about the Health Stone. You get three charges on the stone you create. Anyways, back to Drain Life. 
it deals damage over the course of a nice short period and of course as it says heals you for like five times the amount main issue is its high mana cost as you can see here you lose mana very quickly compared to any other spell that you use Okay, so apparently they made it a lot more spammable, apparently, which I have no issues with, but if you use it too much, you will lose a lot of mana, as a matter of fact. You, you really will lose a lot of mana, so don't, don't drain life too much. Don't. Serious, don't. Um, a few other noteworthy abilities that you're most likely going to have automatically. Uh, you have Fear. That's a nice CC ability for PvE or PvP. Um, unending breath, additional swim speed, along with being able to breathe for 10 extra minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately, like 50% of it is useless if you're counted as an undead. Um, another really good one is Demonic Circle, which you automatically obtain. Actually, I just realized you actually obtain that at level 10. That's really cool. Either way, though, it allows you to create an area effect. I don't know him, but either way. <clears throat> Actually, do I have any... Okay. Anyways, you have Demonic Circle, which allows you to create an area of effect. Demonic Circle, you create that. You use the ability Demonic Circle Teleport. Teleports you to where you create your Demonic Circle. Creating a Demonic Circle has a 10 second cooldown, while creating while being able to teleport as a 30 second cooldown. And also, I've tried this so many times, but it says, if you cast Mock Circle, let's see if this actually works. Oh, it does work. Huh. Interesting. Anyways, though. Never, never had that work before. Anyways, though. <clears throat> of course, there's also a 40 yard range, so if you're out of range of your own demonic circle then unfortunately you can't teleport but either way either way though let's go over a few important abilities to take note of in the normal warlock talent tree so two main abilities off the bat off the rip level 10 straight burning rush and fell domination fell domination in my personal opinion is best if you are a demon up well actually technically it's really good for all of them but it might be better as a demon lock, a demo lock, especially if, like, your fell guard dies. But either way, as you can see here, three minute cooldown, it can be reduced to a two minute cooldown through the fell packed talent. But it makes it so that any of your main baseline summons, which actually, ooh, I should talk about that real quick. Oh, yeah. So no matter what class you are, you have the choice of one of four to five, five for your demo. Um, four to five demons that you can summon. The automatic first one you obtain is the Imp. It's literally the first one you obtain. You literally get level one, even. The Imp has pretty decent abilities. It has the ability of a Firebolt. It also has the ability Flee, which allows it to remove all movement impairing effects, and apparently stuns as well, to immediately run to you. And it also has Singe Magic, which is important because, well, it, it literally clears you of magic effects, which is grand. It is beautiful and powerful, too. It has a 15 second cooldown. Flea has a 20 second cooldown. And yeah, there's a cast time on the Fireball of your demon. Anyways, next up is the Voidwalker. This was honestly one of my most favorite summons. Fuck! Thokatas. Thokatas. That's why I like to call him Thokatas. Anyways, the Voidwalker. Voidwalker has four base abilities, one which is activatable automatically, but what it does... Oh, get back here, boy. Anyways, it makes it so that the Voidwalker has extra threat regeneration. Anyways, he has two base abilities, that being... Consuming Shadows and Suffering. Suffering is literally a taunt. Five second taunt. Literally like every single other taunt. Every single other taunt in the world. Uh, consuming Shadows is a nice ability. Is It cleaves. Actually this is probably like the one of the few abilities that is really powerful. But 
essentially every time the Voidwalker attacks, he does a nice cleave which deals damage to all enemies in an area effect. And heals himself for 100% of the damage dealt, so yeah. It's actually really powerful. Additionally, ya boy got a passive called Shadow Shield, which allows him to take 40% reduced damage from all physical damage. Now that is nice. Oh, and we also have Shadow Bulwark, which is basically a last stand, 30% additional max health. Actually... Okay. And with a two minute cooldown, though mine is one and a half because I have the teachings of the Black Harvest. Mm -hmm. Anyways, next up is the Fell Hunter. Fell Hunter is honestly uh, really decent for PvP or PvE. Either way, though. The main ability of the Fell Hunter is Shadow Bite, a melee ability which deals shadow damage. Then they have Devour Magic. Devour Magic allows him to purge a magical buff from an enemy, similar to, say, the Imp Singe Magic, but it's for enemies and beneficial abilities as well. In doing so, the Fell Hunter will actually be healed in addition to also regenerating energy. Pretty handy. And for the special ability, that being Spell Lock, on a... Jesus Christ, 24 second cooldown. 24 second cooldown, which allows you to make it so that the enemy is unable to cat... It, it, basically, they're interrupted for 5 seconds if you time it right. Um, I don't think this boy has... It. No, he doesn't. Anyway, oop, wrong ability. Anyways, next up is the Succubus. Yes, it says Sayed. Go along with it. That's why I use glyphs. Thank you very much. Anyways, the main ability of the Succubus is Lash of Pain, which deals shadow damage to the target. It's basically like Shadow Bite for the Fell Hunter. Then they have Lesser Invisibility, which makes them invisible for five minutes, not usable in combat, and of course breaks whenever dealing damage or doing anything really then they have access to whiplash on a six second cooldown and minor range it allows you it allows the succubus to reduce the target's movement speed in addition to increasing the damage they take by demons by one percent for 15 seconds stacking up to 10 times i did not know that as a matter of fact that extra damage i did not know that anyway succubus has access to the seduction ability <clears throat> which is only, I believe it's, yeah, it's only usable on humanoids, so because of that, the Succubus is only really useful in PvP. That doesn't mean it's not useful in PvE, though. Anyways, it makes it so that the, um, it obviously make it disorients the target and forces them into a disorient, uh, it disorients them and forces them to walk towards the Succubus. For 30 seconds, as says. Of course, we gotta always remember that it's always, it's always less for players. Always less. And then, of course, finally, you have the Felguard. Now, Felguard is basically the main summon that you're going to use if you are a Demonology Warlock. Especially because, like, you have a ton of talents that will actually, like, skill into the freaking yeah. Yeah, you, there's just a lot. It's a lot, and it's awesome. Anyways, though. Main abilities that the Felguard has ac access to is Legion Strike, which deals damage to the target and reduces healing effectiveness on them by 20% for 12 seconds. That, in general, just makes it automatically good for both PV PvE and PvP, especially when you're dealing with healers. Uh, they have access to Pursuit, which is essentially a free charge. Charge. Uh, it deals damage, and it also makes it so they have a 30% reduced movement speed for 8 seconds on a 10 second cooldown. That's cool. They also have access to the threatening presence that the Warlock or Voidwalker has, and they have access to Fellstorm, an AoE ability which causes them to deal damage every to deal damage roughly up to five times over the course of a four second period, or once every 0.8 seconds, as it says. And they are unable to do any action. At any other actions aside from well moving and stuff while performing the Fellstorm. 30 second cooldown. 
Their special ability is Axe Toss, which has a... I can't attack that target. I don't... Hold on. Why... What? Please, someone explain this that. to me. Okay, <laughs> I'm going, I was like, hold the phone, hold the phone. <laughs> Anyways, though. <clears throat> Axe Toss, which basically is a range stun, it's, an, it's a range stun. That is beautiful. No, ma It doesn't matter who you're talking to, stuns are beautiful. And the only stun the Warlock has is Shadow Fury, which has a one, which has the following cast time. 45 second cooldown up actually initially has like a minute cooldown as well in addition to only having an eight yard radius three seconds stun it's aoe so it's like one of the best stuns in the game still <laughs> either way now then with the summons out of the way we can actually move on to other stuff so one of the main baseline things for the Warlock are curses. The Warlock can have up to three curses. The main one they obtain is Curse of Weakness, which, as it says, reduces the attack speed or the time between an enemy's attacks by 20% for two minutes. Mm hmm. It's, be it's honestly specifically for melee physical enemies. Say it's useful against like warriors, survival hunters, pallies. Well, non-holy pallies, at least. But yeah, you get the idea. If you have curses of embeeflement, enfeeblement, my bad, not embeeflement, enfeeblement, which you're most likely going to get no matter what. It doesn't matter what class you are. Always get this because it's really good. You obtain curse of tongue and curse of exhaustion. Note, you can only have one curse per warlock on a target. Curse of Tongues makes it so that it increases the target's casting time by 30%, which automatically makes you even better than any other caster in the game. It lasts for one minute, yes, and it lasts even shorter on players, but let's be honest, what is going to hit harder? You hitting them with a 10-foot trunk, or you hitting them, you hitting a mage with a tank that... Okay, what well, it was a good ref. Okay, um, would you rather be hit by a six-second cast time pyroblast or a four-second cast time pyroblast? I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> Technically, that's fifty percent. Either way, doesn't matter. So, always get this. And then you have Curse of Exhaustion, which reduces target's movement speed by fifty percent for twelve seconds. I don't know if it's actually reduced for enemy players or not. Either way. Anyways, over here, you're also going to want to get another ability, that being, you have two ability choices, that being Mortal Coil and Howl of Terror. Mortal Coil will always be Howl of Terror. Let me tell you why. And I'm pretty sure Icy Veins will all... Oh yeah, I should actually mention that. Because I don't know everything, I'm, I might be, this might be the best class I'm bad at. Best. This is the best class that I am best at, but that does not know, does that... I am still screwing. I apologize so much. <laughs> I don't know everything. I'm not the best. Look at Icy Veins, because that's just a culmination of all the best players. There you go. Howl of Terror. It's an AoE ability which causes five enemies to become feared for the next 20 seconds. On a 40 second cooldown. Mortal Coil. It incapacitates a single target for three seconds but heals you for 20% of your max health. Both of these are good in their own situations, but ultimately Mortal Coil wins out because of the fact that it's a 20% max heal, max health heal. You can't pass that up, my guy. You really can't. Oh, I also forgot to mention Burning Rush. That's a very important one. Burning Rush makes it so that you gain 50% additional movement speed, but you take 4% of your max health as damage every second. And you're unable to be slowed below 100% of your max movement speed. And it lasts permanently until cancel. 
the dirt the um damage can be reduced by 50 percent in addition to granting you an additional 10 percent movement speed if i remember correctly let me double check this let me double check this yep 10 percent anyways oh and yeah fell down fell domination Cause your main summons to have a 90% reduced cast time. There we go. Forgot to mention that. <laughs> um, abilities that are still going to be like half decent. Um, you have Banish, which is good against elementals, aberrations, or, or demons, of course. Makes it so that you can't damage them, but they can't damage. It's basically a stun. Uh, stun lock. Uh, 30 sec. yes. 30 second stun lock. Uh, then you have Amplify Curse, which on a one minute cooldown empowers your curses. Those cooldown can be reduced by down to 30 seconds. Uh, you have all these passives as well. They are really good. I recommend taking all of them. Uh, Demonic Embrace, 10% 10 increased stamina. Demonic Inspiration, 5% increased attack speed on your pet. That is just grand. Wrathful Minion, 5% additional damage dealt by your minion that is just even more grand now this is required in order to obtain demonic gateway just letting you know anyways uh demonic fortitude five percent increased max health to you and your pets that is that is chef's kiss right there oh i also forgot to mention demon skin and fell armor De which affects your soul each ability Yes, your Soul Leech. Soul Leech is an ability which allows you to gain absorption equal to you and your minions to gain absorption equal to a portion of the damage dealt. 3% of the total single target damage, mind, mind you. Up to a maximum of 10% of your max health initially? Yeah, I believe 10%. Or no, it's 5% of your max health initially, I believe. Either way. <clears throat> Either way, Demon Skin now allows you to regenerate at 0.4% of your max health every second. Which is, again, that is grand. That does mean, unfortunately, every 5 seconds you gain 2% of, of your max health as absorption. Which results in you having to go for 25 seconds if you want 10%. Yeah, it's it, it's long. Either way, though, 15% of your max health now absorbed. That is nice. And you gain 90% additional armor, so that's just great. Then you have Fell Armor, which causes whenever Soul Leech absorbs damage, 10% of it absorbed and spread out over the course of 5 seconds, plus 3% damage reduction. Who doesn't love that? So yeah, you take damage, extra damage over time, or portion of the damage you take is da taken over time, so you don't die immediately. That's grand. Anyways, I need to speed this up here. Uh, you have uh, demonic gateway. This is one that I recommend always getting because it's just an ability that is going to get you from point A to point B every time. You and your allies can take it. It's wonderful. Yes, it does kind of have its own 90 second cooldown, but 10 second, but the ability usage is a 10 second duration. Use the gateway, it's a 90 second cooldown. Um, as I mentioned, Shadow Fury, pure ability, it's beautiful. Uh, Dark Pact. Dark Pact, that is a good ability to honestly take. I don't because I already have tons of survivability, uh, on, in my personal opinion. Uh, I might kill myself. <laughs> Might get myself killed. Either way. <clears throat> it's useful if you need some form of high defense because it sacrifices 20% of your mat of your current health to grant you double that. Plus some for 20 seconds. And it it's, as it says, usable while suffering from control impairing effects, so I'm assuming you can use it while stunned, which is really good. Um, you can also get Shadow Flame. Which causes you to slow enemies in a cone for 70% of their max movement speed for 6 seconds, which is really nice. And then you don't really get any more abilities than that, but something I do recommend is obtaining Soul Link. Which is... Soul Link is great, 
it's great for tanking or when you need to tank 10% of all all 10% of all the damage you take is taken by your demon pet instead that is grand don't pass it up it's a great defensive and then you have profane bargain which allows the uh Soul Link to grant an additional 10% damage sharing when you're below 35% of your max health. So that's even better. Oh, and then you also have the final one down here as well. Um, Inquisitor's Gaze makes it so that your spells, of course, have a chance to summon an eye, which deals damage every, as it says, 0.8 seconds, over for roughly 12 seconds. It's honestly pretty decent. Initially, it was an ability of its own where it acted like the uh, familiar that the mage, arcane mage has. Then you also have Summon Soul Keeper, which <clears throat> kind of confusing. <laughs> but basic, I'm assuming how it works is you obtain souls. Obviously, it says it whenever you kill a target and occasionally escaped souls you previously collected so um, what I'm assuming is that every time you use soul shard you have a chance of obtaining a tormented soul but when used <clears throat> it, but when used it creates a soul keeper which deals damage it consumes all your tormented souls deals chaos damage per soul deals chaos damage per soul consumed which is really nice and of course deals damage beyond eight targets and you can only have one Soul Keeper active at a time. So yeah. Um, let's see. Ah yes, one more ability. Soul Burn. Soul Burn is really good as it makes... It, you sacrifice a Soul Shard for a 6 second cooldown. On a 6 second cooldown. Which allows one of the chosen 5 abilities to become empowered. Yes. Just some basic stuff. I'm not going over all those talents. Otherwise, this video is going to take forever. We're already 26. Oh, my God. We're 26 minutes, and that's so bad. <laughs> Anyways, though, I'm going to show you the specialization. So let me just prepare real quick, and, yeah, I'll be back. And we'll be starting off with the Affliction specialization. Alrighty, I am back. So we are ready for the Affliction Warlock. So the Affliction Warlock is the very first class that I'm pretty sure you actually are able to become or specialization <laughs> and either way the affliction warlock has one slight downfall that the other two specializations don't have they are absolutely terrible in AOE affliction warlocks suck in area of effect potential now technically <clears throat> they do have ways for area of effect. I have the entirety of the right side is area of effect oriented. But that no, it's not good still. It's really not, unfortunately. So then alright, so how does the affliction warlock work? Well, basically you just apply a bunch of dots to the enemy. That's any damage. That's basically the Affliction Warlock. You also have the ability to... You do have Soul Shard Spenders, though you don't really use them often. I know it sounds ironic and partially, um... Wrong? Is that the right word? Wrong? Not really. But, um... Either way, as an Affliction Warlock, like I said, you suck in AoE potential. You do have AoE potential. It just sucks. Though, when you do get good AoE potential, you freaking rock. Now, one thing to know as well is that, as an Affliction Warlock, you also have kind of terrible uh, regeneration. You kind of have terrible, or not regeneration, you have terrible soul shard generation. That's what you have. 
compared to the other two specializations, which is why you only actually have two Soul Shard Spenders, that being Melfic Rapture and Sea of Corruption. Both being, honestly, signature abilities when you think about it. <clears throat> Either way, let's go down the path. So, let's start with Malefic Rapture. This is the simplest ability in the world, but the most complicated to explain. Here's why. Basically how it works is that it deals damage based on how many dots you have. And it will damage multiple targets depending on how many targets have dots applied to them. So, literally, I'm in game, I can already explain it, so of course, we have Corruption on there, I use Malefic Rapture, pow, I deal damage to them. Excuse my Grimoire of Sacrifice, I'm pretty sure you have, I just enraged a million different Warlock mains by using that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Either way though. <clears throat> Malefic Rapture is use. It literally says it. You're damaging, you're damaging periodic effects from your spells erupt on all targets, causing damage per effect. So, I'm going to apply all my main dots. All my main dots are there. We have four dots. How? That was a crit, so let's try that again. There you go. Th roughly 30,000 damage is how much damage I dealt with Melfic Rapture. Which is honestly pretty good. That is genuinely good. But now, we get over to this scenario. Where you have multiple different dots on multiple different targets. I use Malefic Rapture. How? I... Let's try that one more time. That works. 12 grand over here. 45 grand over here. I have three dots applied here. I got one dot applied here. It's complicated, but it makes sense. Hopefully. Seed of Corruption. Seed of Corruption is your second Soul Shard spending ability when utilized. It will, of course, do the following. You fire it on an enemy and... Yeah, now they now have a seed in them. And it will explode eventually. There you go. It will explode, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Additionally... Oops, I'm not going to use that. Either way. Additionally, if a certain amount of damage is dealt, you basically... It, it explodes early, which is really nice. <clears throat> but yeah, that's it's honestly a pretty decent AoE ability. The unfortunate part is that, again, it's a soul shard spender, and you have so terrible soul shard generation. Actually, there are three main ways you can generate soul shards. Your main first way is through Agony, which has a chance of occurring. It's kind of bad, kind of good. Your second way is through Drain Soul, which grants you one if the target dies while channeling on them, which is terrible for bosses unless you're dealing with multiple adds. The third way is through... Where is it? Is it this one? Okay, Pandemic Invocation. <clears throat> Pandemic Invocation, which has a chance to grant you a soul shard if you refresh the dot with under with less than five seconds remaining on its duration. It's a very low chance, obviously. There used, I'm, I swear, there used to be a life tap ability as well. Either way though, <clears throat> moving forward, forward, you also have unstable affliction, which is probably the best, one of the best abilities you have Oh, I, I did not realize. So it's basically, uh, Unstable Affliction apparently is like Drain Soul <clears throat> for it for generating soul shards, so that's nice, as it says. And of course, if dispelled, silences and damages the target who, si who removed the spell. So that's nice. Anyways, though, this middle part right here is probably one of the most, most important, as it gives you two options, which is beautiful. Absolute Corruption which makes corruption permanent and deal 15% additional damage or increase its duration to 24 seconds, which is 10 seconds more on players, or siphon life, which deals, which applies a 15 second duration dot, which deals damage and heals you for 30% of the damage dealt. Ooh boy, that is nice. 
and the damage is actually slightly less than that of corruption. And if you do know this, you also have the ability to obtain Soul Swap, requiring one Soul Shard in order to use. Copies your damage over time effects and haunt from the target. Yep. <clears throat> so, that one, I know for a fact how it works. It's literally just a copy. It's basically you doing... Uh, control C and then using control V on a different target essentially that that's literally what it is <laughs> um, for another ability now this is this is your main thing for like an extra AoE uh, phantom singularity it causes you a 45 second cooldown creates an area of effect or yeah you place a debuff I believe it's usable on allies as well hold on let me see no, it's not usable on allies. Maybe? Hold on. Nope, only enemies. Either way, it places a dot on an enemy and deals damage to targets within 15 yards of it. And you're healed for 25% of the damage dealt. I use it because it's a heal. Affliction is great for sustain. <laughs> I love sustain. The other one is Vile Taint, which deals less damage, has a lower cooldown, Oh, my bad, is the only other soul shard requiring ability you have. Either way, though, it creates an area effect which lasts up to 8 seconds, applies agony, curse, and curse of exhaustion to targets that are within the effect, while also dishing out damage to enemies who are within. Or no aim at, no, it deals... Okay, I think, okay. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't exactly. I need to double check how this ability works. Let's see. Does it apply in area of effect? Oh, it actually just changes it. Hold on. Right. Does it apply in area of effect? No, it just applies a dot. Okay, that's actually really cool. Okay, you can't change that down. Well, dang. <laughs> well, done that suck. <laughs> Anyways, though. <clears throat> Grimoire of Sacrifice, this is an ability that is only accessible to Affliction and Demon Ult, not Demonology, uh, Destruction Warlocks. So, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's only really used, it's only really useful if you don't care about, like, if you don't care about having a demon out or not, because you still gain your demon's effects. Plus, it's additional shadow damage being dealt. Anyways, though... Next up, we're on to the last three abilities. These ones can make or break a build. You have Haunt, an ability which causes you to deal damage to the target and increase the damage they take by 10% for the next 18 seconds. Additionally, if the target dies, Haunt's cooldown is refreshed and it has a 15 second cooldown. It's honestly a really powerful damage dealer. Uh, it can be upgraded to deal 20% additional damage. And additionally, to return a soul whenever the haunt spell ends or is dispelled, which I believe also applies to... <laughs> oh yeah, um, you also gain the buff Haunted Soul while it's active, which increases the damage of all damage over time effects. Oh. Oh, so I actually have to wait for it to go out for it to turn health. Okay, that's different. Um, sorry, I play too much of the uh, ability uh, ascension. Either way, haunt spells increase damage of your t damage over time effects on to all targets by twenty percent while active. So that's a really good ability. That is great. Uh, then you have Summon Dark Glare, which, allow which is your main summon. That's one thing to note about the Warlock. Every single specialization has an ultimate summon. The, uh, the Affliction Warlocks is the Dark Glare, which, as it says, increases the duration of all dots you have by an additional 8 seconds, plus deals damage to your target, lasts for 20 seconds, deals 25% additional damage per dot on the target. It can be enhanced, of course, to... You, you read the stats. I'm not going to explain it. I'm just trying to make this quick. 
It can be enhanced to, yeah, last an additional 10 seconds as well. And its cooldown can be reduced by 30 seconds, giving it a one and a half minute cooldown. Grim Reach, 50% uh, additional damage to enemies afflicted by damage over time. So ba basically it's cleaves. For every dot that you have on it, it's basically like Malphic Rapture. But for the Darkler. And then finally, Soul Rot. This is a beautiful ability. Soul Rot is an AoE ability on 30 second cooldown, as you can see. Which, I have it, so I can actually demonstrate it. It deals damage to your primary target, causes all nearby other targets to have a dot applied to them as well. <clears throat> your main target takes additional damage compared to the other targets. Actually, it damages up to three additional targets, and for the next eight seconds, your drain life now drains from all enemies afflicted, affected by soul rot and will not consume any mana. Whew. Soul rot is beautiful. It initially has a one minute cooldown, actually, with its cooldown being able to reduce by 30 seconds, which is really nice. Plus, each target, if you have dark harvest, each target affected by soul rot increase your haste and critical strike. By that amount, as you see, for the next eight, for the total of eight seconds. Booyah! Is it beautiful? In my opinion, yes, it is. <laughs> That's the affliction warlock. Anyways, though, um, whew, how are we doing on time? We are doing bad on time. We're forty-one minutes in. I'm gonna try and make this next part fast. We're going on to the. Uh, Destruction Warlock. So, I'll be back when I'm ready. Alright, I am back. Also, forgot to mention as well, <coughs> uh, the Affliction Warlock's Mastery. Ooh, that's nice. Anyways. <coughs> the Affliction Warlock's Mastery increased the damage of Malefic Rapture, Agony of Corruption, Unstable Affliction, and Sea of Corruption by per percent, depending on how much mastery you have. Anyways, this time we are on the Destruction Warlock. The Destruction Warlock is Lord Have Mercy Powerful, and I mean it. <clears throat> so, this is my build. I, I'm going to be honest here. I love going down this middle route. The unfortunate part is, in my, it's not worth it. It's genuinely not worth going down the middle route to get because this this right here is peak performance and I will tell you why when at the end anyway not not at the end of this segment either way <clears throat> real quick let's actually talk about the mastery of this ability <clears throat> so mastery chaotic energies your spells deal 21 deal a percent increase East damage plus a random amount of up to percent increased or percent additional increased damage. So basically, to put that into simpler terms, every time you cast a spell, it deals some amount. I'm assuming between like one to whatever your mastery is percent increased damage plus one to some percent of additional increased damage so let's go with like 30 percent for example um your spells deal say 30 percent increased damage plus a random amount of up to 30 percent additional increased damage how what i am assuming <clears throat> is it takes that increased damage increased damage amount it applies that then it rolls a random amount random percent between min to max We'll say it hits a 30. We'll say it hits a 30 both times. You, it gets a 30% 30, 30 increased damage. So like deal 100 damage. That's 30 additional damage. Then it rolls a second time to depict additional increased damage. So I'm assuming that 30% is then applied to that 30%. And 30% of 30% is 9. So that's technically 39. So it's a 39 additional damage. I hope my math is correct. <laughs> I am a mathematician in my school. Anyways, let's look at the abilities because, oh my god, this boy is good. <clears throat> so, 
Actually, Destruction Warlock is grand in AoE combat. So, main first ability, Chaos Bolt. Chaos Bolt requires two soul shards, has a cast time, deals chaos damage, and damage is increased by your critical strike chance. So, more critical strike chance you have, the more damage Chaos Bolt will actually deal with that need. <clears throat> oh, and it's guaranteed crit as well. Actually, let me check. It deals pretty well. Ho, ho, ho! Oh boy! That's nice. So it's a guaranteed crit as well. That's always really nice to know. <clears throat> so, one thing to know about the Destruction Warlock is that it works completely different compared to Demonology or the Affliction Warlock. Instead of just generating soul shards with every cast, you instead generate soul shard fragments. Yes, soul shard fragments. Incinerate will generate a natural two soul shard fragments plus one on crit. <clears throat> Immolate generates one on immediate use and 50%. Actually, oh, pure act. Oh, every time, okay, my bad. Every time it ticks for damage, you generate one Soul Shard Fragment, plus 50% chance to generate an additional one when the when it crits. I genuinely did not know that, actually. <clears throat> so that's handy. Then you have Conflagrate. Conflagrate. That's what I'm calling it. Conflagrate. Bite me in chat. <laughs> Bite me in my, how you pronounce it. That is how I'm pronouncing it. If there is an actual way to pronounce it, though, do please link something to tell me how to pronounce it, because I've never been able to pronounce it in my entire life. Anyways, this is your main ability that you're going to be using for just overall. Generates five soul shard fragments, three can have up to two charges max initially. Every time you use it, so basically you only need like two uses and you get a free soul shard, basically. <clears throat> <laughs> do I actually have corruption, as a matter of fact? Let me double check. Do I have corruption? I don't think I do. Okay, so corruption actually becomes emulet then. That's nice. That's actually great to hear, because emulet is much better than corruption. Anyways. <clears throat> Rain of Fire. Rain of Fire deals fire damage to targets in an area effect, of course, as you can see. It's honestly pretty decent, in my opinion. It really is. Also, note, these abilities would normally be colored orange. The only reason they are colored green is because of the Code of Zerath. The Codex of Zerath passive? So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm keeping that forever, by the way. Anyways, though, important things to note. Um, backdraft, every time you use Conflagrate... It causes your next incinerate or chaos bolt, stacking up to two times, by the way, for the, in the next 10 seconds to have 30% reduced cast time. That's important because they genuinely have long cast times, and that is necessary. Then you also have pyrogenetics. Enemies affected by your rain of fire take 5% increased damage from all your fire spells. Ain't that nifty. <laughs> and now the middle one here. This one is important. Mayhem which causes your spells to have a chance to apply Havoc to an enemy for 5 seconds. Havoc, a 30 second cooldown ability, which allows you to mark a target for 15 seconds, which causes all single target spells to strike the Havoc victim for 3 fifths of the damage dealt. Yes, I am going into Math Latent's terms. Mayhem just applies that for 5 seconds at the same effect. Pandemodium will increase the base duration of Havoc by 3 seconds, so I'm pretty sure that makes it... I'm not sure if that makes it so that Havoc lasts for like 12 seconds. goes from 12 to 15. I'm not sure. I'm not going to test that. I'm trying to rush. And it increases the chance of Mayhem proccing by an additional 10%, which is really good. Then you have Cry Havoc, which causes Chaos Bolt to... Damage the target effect. When Chaos Bolt damage it... Ah. Basically, it causes every time you use Chaos Bolt on a target that has Havoc applied to them, it deals area effect damage. Ain't that nice. So, there's a few abilities I want to talk about. Channel 
demon fire. I love this ability. How it works is a very after a very quick channel. It may, it's only usable if a target has emulet applied to them. But it shoots 20 bolts over the course of 24 seconds, or 2.4 seconds. You know, just watch. Oh, oh that is beautiful damage. <laughs> I love channel demon fire. It is a grand ability. But basically how it works is any target that has emulet applied to them, it will target those and yeah, it just, <laughs> it's so good. It's a good ability, dude. It's AOE oriented and it's also single target oriented. How can you not like that? It's an ability that you can't not like. It really is. Actually, it's 15 initially and it can channel up to five additional bolts. Each bolt increased the running duration of them along all targets by 0 0.5 seconds. So hey, you get a nice refresher of your emulet duration. Ain't that nice? Then, the ability that very nicely complements is Cataclysm. The Cataclysm, I love it. It deals, it's an area effect that deals shadow flame damage and applies emulet to all targets hit. It's great. It's a great ability and pairs well with channel demon fire. So, yeah. Great ability to have. Um, another good ability to have is Soul Fire. It has a long cast time along with a long cooldown, but it's the only ability that will immediately generate you one Soul Shard off the bat. Mm -hmm. Also, another ability to note is Shadow Burn. Shadow Burn is basically, an, it's basically the Destruction Warlock's Execute. Uh, deal Shadow Flame damage, 50% additional crit chance on targets with less than 20% max health. Uh, restores the Soul Shard. Restores one Soul Shard and refunds a charge if the target dies within 5 seconds of using the ability. 10 second cooldown. I do not like that. <laughs> I do not like that. At all. Because in my opinion... I would much rather spam Chaos Bolt or Rain of Fire than just use an Execute. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, yes, Grimoire Sacrifice. Not using it because it's not worth it. Anyways, on to the main course for the Destruction Warlock. Summon Infernal. The, uh, the Destruction Warlock's ultimate summon. Literally, you basically create an you. Unlike any other ultimate summon, it deals air effect damage and stuns all enemies hit for two seconds when you summon it. In addition to that, the summon lasts for 30 seconds. It's the longest dirt lasting summon you have. Deals damage to enemies and generates one soul shard fragment every half a second. So every second you gain two soul shard fragments, which means it takes five seconds to gain one full soul shard. It's nice. It's nice. It really is. It can be empowered in two ways. You can pause it. But the main course is these two. Grand Warlock's design, which can reduce it by one minute, giving it a two minute cooldown. And then Reign of Chaos, which causes every soul shard you spend to have a 15% chance to summon an additional Infernal, which lasts for eight seconds. Now, ain't that nifty. <laughs> but here's another good one. Ritual of Ruin. Now, it says 10 soul shards, but it's initially 15. Basically, every certain amount of soul shards you spend will make your next Chaos Bolt, Rain of Fire, or... Yeah, Chaos Bolt or Rain of Fire have no soul shards and cast at 50% addition. And have its cast time reduced by 50%. That's nice. It can be reduced to 5 soul shard or it can be reduced to 10 soul shards which is just grand and you also have burned ashes i'm not going to read that you get that but avatar of destruction every time chaos bolt or rain of fire consumes a ritual of ruin you gain a blast for me for eight seconds which is basically a free infernal 
That's literally what it is. It's a free infernal. Note, blasphemies and some infernal can stack on each other for soul shard generation. <laughs> so, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's basically it's basically a reign of chaos, but with the added bonus of not having a one minute cool a three minute cooldown. <laughs> that's basically that's basically Avatar of Destruction and Blasphemy. Also, important thing to note, you also have Chaos Incarnate. This is a really good one because it makes it so that all soul shard requiring abilities now take full effect from your mastery. But Oh my god, Dimensional Rift. I love this ability because it is the ability, it's the artifact ability for the Destruction Warlock. Like, it's, oh my god. Compared to the build I'm running, it's not as good. It's not as good. It really isn't, unfortunately. Yes, 45 seconds, it literally has three charges, and as it says, generates three soul shard fragments, so it's like really good for generating soul shards. Even if you were to use all three of them, that's still not a full soul shard you have generated. Well, it's one, but still though. It's it's just getting this is not worthwhile the combo of summon infernal to the blasphemy. Anyways though, how long are we on this? We're at 56 minutes in. I'm gonna have to um Yeah, this is going over an hour. You guys know it. You guys know this is going over an hour, but it's time. For my favorite specialization, demonology. Alrighty, so we are now on the demonology. Yes, I yes, yes, I did actually just swap. Either way. Demonology is my favorite specialization. And always will be because of the true power you can get out of it. So Important abilities to note, obviously, called Dreadstalkers. This allows you to summon literally two Dreadstalkers to your side. It does require a target in order to use. But hey, that's still really good. As it says, two ferocious Dreadstalkers to your side to attack the target for 12 seconds. Dreadstalkers have access to the Dreadbite ability as well, which they automatically use upon being summoned. And once they leave, they grant you two charges of Demonic Core. Ooh, Demonic Core is actually an important thing that I need to note as well. <clears throat> Anyways, though. <clears throat> Real quick, mastery for the Demonologist. Increase the damage done by your minions. <laughs> Which includes these motherfuckers right here. Yes, I just cursed. Amen. Bite me again. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Demonic Core, an automatic passive that you obtain. How it works is, as you can see here, you can read it out or you can listen to me. I, this is why I put my things over because I, I explained it my own way. The game explains it its own way. You interpret it how you interpret it. Every time your one of your wild imps goes bye-bye or are imploded, they have a 10% chance to grant you a Demon Core or Demonic Core. Your summoned Dreadstalkers will guaranteeingly grant you one per Dreadstalker summoned. And it reduces the cast time of your Demon Bolt, making it instant cast. And you can have up to a maximum of four stacks. Demon Bolt is basically... Demon Bolt is not a good ability to cast on its own due to its long cast time. Especially when compared to Shadow Bolt. Actually, when compared to Shadow... Actually, yeah, overall, Shadow Bolt is a lot better of an ability to use compared to Demon Bolt. Because actually, here's the interesting thing. Both Demon Bolt and Shadow Bolt deal roughly the same amount of damage. Why am I getting so many crits? Deal base damage. Thank you. Either way, <clears throat> Demon Bolt and Shadow Bolt deal the same roughly the same amount of damage and you can get an even faster cast time out of shadow bolt with it only being 3.2 seconds for two soul shards 
rather than the Demon Bolt's 3.6. Plus, you're dealing twice as much damage as you normally would be, so... You get the same Soul Shard generation, double damage, and even less cast time if you just use Shadow. So yeah, de ish, Demon, <laughs> Demon Bolt is only useful if you have a Demon Core. <laughs> Anyways, though. Or a Demonic Core. Anyways, though, um, important abilities. Summon a Vile Fiend. Actually, Demonology is the main class, or specialization, that uses the most amount of, that has the most amount of Soul Shard requiring abilities. Unlike the other two specializations that only have three, this one has one, two, a three, next up four, a five and six, <laughs> six total Soul Shard requiring abilities. <laughs> that's a lot. That that's a lot. There is no getting around that. That is a lot. Mhm. Mm so, with that in mind, you also have a ton of summons as well. Um so anyways, important abilities. Nope. You have Soul Strike. Soul Strike is an ability that the Felguard uses and it automatically generates one soul shard. Really good to have if you want extra soul shard generation. Summon Vile Fiend, in my opinion, is a really nice summon. Grants you diff decent 15 seconds? Yeah, roughly 15 seconds of the Vile Fiend, which deals damage to your chosen target. Requires one soul shard in order to use. 45 second cooldown. Not bad. Then you also have Bile Scourge Bombers, which is good for when you have AoE issues. Oh, it doesn't require Soul Shard. I thought it required Soul Shards. It used to require two Soul Shards in order to use, actually. Anyways. Then Demonic Strength, one minute cooldown. It basically grants you... It basically allows you to send your Fell Guard in for a free Fell Storm. Yes. Then you have Implosion. Implosion is an ability I like to avoid. Simply because of the fact that I don't like it. It forces me to utilize my wild imps. I like my wild imps to be active, not to go bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though I have about a nice million different ways of empowering my wild imps, so I'll take that. Anyways, important thing. Anyways, though, important things to note of is the is empowering dreadbite. Uh, here's one. When Dread Stalkers charge, their Dread Bite attack now hits all targets within 8 yards, deals 10% more damage. That's a really good ability. Uh, Carnivorous Stalkers, Dread Stalkers attacks have a 10% chance to trigger an additional Dread Bite. That is another really good one. <clears throat> oh, here's a good one. Grimoire Felguard. Yes! <laughs> See, instead of the uh, Grimoire Sacrifice, you have Grimoire Felguard. With this one, use on a 2 minute cooldown. It, summon, it basically is a free fell guard for 17 seconds that deals 45% additional damage. And it stuns the current and it stuns your current target as well. So that's like really nice. And you can actually use it in conjunction with the Vile Fiend for like a quick double summon too. Uh, Doom, we don't really use it. But it's an extra soul shard generator, I guess. After like 16 seconds. Yeah, no, that's not good, really. <laughs> and yes, you have Kazakh's Final Curse, which kind of helps, but in reality, it really, really doesn't. <clears throat> Anyways, though, two main abilities to take note of in this middle row. Uh, Nether Portal and Summon Demonic Tyrant. God, always get Summon Demonic Tyrant. It's a one and a half minute cooldown, which basically increased the duration of all your summons, plus 10 wild imps. Because it can't do all the wild imps, of course. You can't have an army of wild imps. Though, back in Battle for Azeroth, I get up to like 20 imps. I love it. Either way, 
increases the duration of all of them for by 15 seconds, which is basically how long it lasts. I don't know if it affects um, those that are summoned from the other portal or not. Either way, though. Increase the damage of your minions by an additional 15%. So, yeah. That's grand, automatically. It can be reduced to a one-minute cooldown through the Grand Warlock's design. It can also empower five Wild Dems to deal 10% additional damage. Or actually, or yeah. Yeah, to deal additional damage. Oh, and oh, I think the tyrant. Okay, for how that's worded, I think the tyrant also gets empowered for every minion empowered. Either way. And you also have this middle one, which allows you to immediately gain all soul shards when you use it, so that's just great. <clears throat> Nether portal. For 15 seconds, every time you spend a soul shard, you summon a demon to your side from the nether. 3 minute cooldown, 1.2 second cast time. This ability, basically whenever you use it, you basically cast Shadow Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, or Demon Core, Demon Bolt, then Hand of Gul'dan. You basically just do that over and over again to get as many minions as you can. <sighs> then you have Gul'dan, Gul'dan's Ambition, <laughs> which basically grants you a free Pit Lord to deal damage to the target, and God is it wonderful. Mm -hmm. And another important thing to know is the empowering of your minions over here. <clears throat> Antoran Armaments, which empowers your Felguard to deal 20% additional damage, and Soul Strike deal 25% of its damage to nearby targets. Really nice. Infernal Command, Felguard active, while Dim's Dead Structures deal 5% additional damage. So you know that's gonna be like constant and permanent. And then you have these two. Immutable Hatred, uh, every time you use a Demonic Core, uh, Felgar deals physical damage in a cleave. Or, no, not cleave. No, the target. My bad. <laughs> I know, I'm reading it in front of me. Yeah, you still get it wrong. I apologize. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, guillotine. 45 second cooldown, which creates an area of effect. Um, yeah. Dealing damage every second for 6 seconds, nearby enemies. And while the Felgar is unarmed, its basic attacks cleave, dealing 50% damage to all targets nearby. Or not, no. Why did I say, oh my god. I thought, I, I, okay. Let me reread that. Your fell guard, um, while unarmed, 50%, 50% additional attack speed. Why am I talking about AoE initially? I am disappointed in myself, my friends. I am disappointed in myself. <laughs> then again, I am trying to do this quick. I am tired. <laughs> I'm not gonna... I know you're probably wanting for a dungeon and stuff like that, but I can't do that. This thing's already an hour long. I'll get you a dungeon next time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And this is How To Warlock for a How To Class video. Bye, everybody.